I would say, after all, what do you mean by, by drawing? This is um, Paul Valery talking to Degas. Degas would repeat his famous axiom, drawing isn't form, but it's a way of seeing form. And then the storm would break out. I muttered, don't understand. He begins to shout, claiming, exclaiming that I don't know what I'm talking about, that I mix in, uh, mixed in with what didn't concern me, and uh, et cetera, et cetera. But I knew what he wanted to say. He was contrasting what he called the setting, the literal, the, the literal representation of objects, with what he meant by drawing. He referred to that particular change brought about by an artist's way of seeing and executing a subject as against the exact rendering, as for instance, in contrast to the camera. So, um, let, me, um, let me add another point to that, and that is, um, to be satisfied, he wished his work to be complete, not by the perfection of its detail, but through its final harmonious effect. He looked for unity, first of all, in construction, in the coordination of the various elements comprising the painting, the proper synthesis between drawing values and color. Wow. And again, 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 you'll see the same conversation. Uh, why am I bringing this one up? Well, the question was um, from Jack, uh, who says, uh, listening to your lectures, I had a couple questions. I was wondering what your thoughts are on detail in painting. Is amount of detail used in a picture simply a subjective element of the artist, or should the artist hold back on rendering every part of the picture? I guess I'm just curious what your thoughts are on lots of detail versus a more subjective approach. You know, I hope that gets you a little bit started. That whole very idea of harm harmonious, you know, that that's... that's you know, that's the musical term that we ought to be using when we do our work. Uh, finesse in the sense of adding more details because there are more lashes possible to be seen on an eyeball, on an eyelid. <laughs> uh, what, what is that, you know? So what is any of this stuff in painting, though, except it's about colors and it's about form and shape and line and all these other things in the abstract, right? So your decisions are, oddly enough, uh, made for you, I think is the best way to say it. Uh, so, well, well, yeah, but they're made for you, but how? How are they made for you? So now let's just talk to an impressionist, right? To a person who, whose the setting is right in front of him right now, and he's saying to himself, how will I know when I'm done? By the way, famously, <laughs> uh, Brackman used to like to say, it takes two people to make a picture, uh, you know, a painter to do it, and somebody to drag him away when it's already finished. And... Um, that's, there's, an interesting, there's an interesting question of detail associated with that, isn't there? Um, there's also a second question, uh, and that question has to do with um, whether you're a student or not. I mean, when you're trying to teach a student, his first job is a grammar job, right? Your job actually truly is to get him to be able to render what he sees in front of him. That's the grade school thing, right? Just get it all down. Make sure you can paint whatever comes up, draw whatever comes up with uh, with a good likeness and with efficiency and all those things we've spoken of so then and so at that point you'd say well isn't a student's job to learn how to make littler and littler things and not lose the unity of the whole yeah it's a very pedantic if you want to put it that way job it, but it is a job it's a it's a very i think a very fundamental job you need to not be not only be able to paint you know little things but you have to be able to paint the context right be able to paint in fact, what I show people, I'll, uh, you know, in my what I call my graduation piece with relation to Gamel, I chose a subject that was that had major forms and interesting major forms, secondary forms and very very fine little forms. In fact, I even added complexity at the very end to the uh, to the little green uh, uh, gourd sitting in the very foreground uh, of the picture. Um, excuse me. So. Um, uh, we're constantly talking in our uh, field about when you're done, about the question of when you're done. Well, the first question is, what did you aim at? If you don't know what you aimed at, you'll never know when you're done, right? So that's the artist talking now, though. 
So if you're an impressionist and you go out to the field, and I mean literally go outdoors, do a plein air painting, if you haven't looked and seen what it is that makes that thing sing, that makes that, that really, it, it, that, what it is that excites you, what it is uh, about it that, that you really want to share with someone, you'll never know when you're finished, will you? And no amount of adding detail is going to get you there if you haven't got a preconceived idea of it fixed in your mind. So that's the, you know, the big impression, uh, depending, perhaps. I mean, perhaps for somebody else, when someone else goes out, he sees 10,000 details and he says, oh, I can't wait to get home and show my, my, uh, my uh, uh, constituents how many leaves I can put onto a single tree, you know. Look, count them. There's 8 million leaves on that tree. You know, I don't think that's exactly what anybody's thinking, right? So... Uh, detail, right? The littleness of the, the little things, the little tiny things. So um, I, I like this other point too, and that is the, I, the idea, and let me wander a bit, you know, but the idea of uh, uh, da Vinci saying, a trifles make perfection and perfection is no trifle. Some people do seem to believe, and maybe as a student, we believe that the little things, you know, getting all your way through and keep on going and going and even doing little things really well is going to make the picture better. But there's nothing like that happening. That Degas quote, he's just simply pointing out that all that matters is, is harmony, is the music, you know, is, the, is the, what you found there that made your heart sing, you know? And, uh, I, you know, I'm, again, uh, if what made your heart sing was, was um, you have such, such microscopic sort of eyes that you could, can see uh, the, the pores on a person's skin. If that's what makes your heart sing, I guess that's, uh, I guess that's, there's no end to the amount of detail you might want to bring to a picture. Of course, that will set up a major work problem, but uh, that's not who's ever neglected that, you know. Um, uh, we all believe in doing whatever it takes to bring what it is we see. So now, so there's another two ways to talk about detail, though. And one of them is you can talk about detail, meaning, meaning showing more particulars on the anatomy, uh, say, of, say of a human. And... Um, you know, I'm showing more and more the evidence of hair, the evidence of the purple line in the veins and all those sorts of things. And uh, so like we're a realist, right? So everything is about an object. Everything is an object and everything is a muscle and everything is a vein or a something or something is something, right? And your job, and, and so is your job then in that case, do you, I mean, I'm sorry, not your job, but if you, do you mean in that case by detail, do you mean more of those little things? Do you get the point, to the point of drawing every little uh, uh, aberration on a person's skin when you're doing a portrait? And the answer, of course, I don't think anybody would dispute the answer to that is you're certainly not going to do that. But that kind of detail is very different in a certain way uh, from the detail of an Impressionist. And, um, and so what detail actually is, is, is just relatively uh, small points, right, that seem to have less weight than other ones if you're being visual. So you understand the major color play in a painting isn't a detail, it's, that's important stuff. You understand the major effects and the distribution of those effects and what they're up to, you know, together is not minor stuff. But um, what you do beyond that level, uh, you know, if you're doing it just for the purpose of adding more stuff, you should question it because and I mean, question it, primarily question whether or not you even know what your point was in being there, because there's no additional amount of stuff by itself that is the moral lesson about detail. Oh, I'm a work, you know, I have a work ethic. I will put in every little thing. Well, you need to have a different ethic, and that is to say you need to have a thing as a whole ethic, a harmony ethic, a, a unity ethic, a point of the whole painting ethic, you know. And when you have that, the question of detail sort of starts disappearing uh, because you already know. I would suggest to you, that's say you've already know when you've won. <laughs> uh, I would suggest to you that uh, what one of the things that t took me a long time to appreciate was, was the work of, um, of, um, of Frank Benson for just exactly that reason. Like, you know, and here I am a student of grammar and I'm thinking this guy doesn't bring enough information to the page. Gamble used to use an expression called pushing it through. He said if he pushed the painting through, and by that he meant to the nth degree of detail or some greater degree of detail, uh, meaning just more stuff. It, 
if he, if he'd pushed it through, this or that might have happened. Well, the point the point though is there is no pushing through if you've achieved your mission, and I don't you know and 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 so have a look at that beautiful uh, uh, three girls in a in a in before the woods painting. You'll see immediately what I mean by that. That painting does not need more detail. Doesn't need more anything of that little type. It's a complete harmony in itself, and it's a song. It's a song of light and a song of color. Oh, what's the point of our painting again? What's the point of what we do? So isn't that a number of interesting things that relate to painting? But I suggest to you that the primary thing when it comes to detail and how much you should bring, it all hinges on what the point was, right? And I would suggest that would be the same in writing or anything else. It's what's the point, you know? So what, I've seen more and more when I was young, when I was a student, I saw more and more that I would get a really beautiful start. And then I'd have this ethic about putting all this stuff in there. And before I knew it, I had lost that the unity, the, the point the, of the picture, the poignancy even of the painting because of that ethic about adding more stuff and just being, you know, I don't want to think you can't draw. Well, yeah, that's an interesting little world though, isn't it? So I thought I'd give that one a try to you today. Um, Degas is a fascinating guy. You got to read Degas. You got to think him through. Uh, find yourself a copy of Gamel's book, but find yourself this one. Degas dance drawing. It's, <laughs> this is a this is a nice piece of uh, this is a nice piece of information. Um, I want to tell you it was uh, no, it was, it was Valerie. Different 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 subject, different time. All right. Uh, I might end with just this um, this one question that keeps coming up. That um, that I, just just to repeat it though, and that is that Degas considered the uh, nature, the actual look of me in front of the camera view of me, to be um, you know of your subject to be nothing but the field. It was just the from which you were drawing something. So if you brought in a painting to him, it was all noodled up. He would simply say, "Well, when are you going to start making a picture?" And so. Have those kinds of things in mind when you question detail, okay? Because there's no moral lesson about how much detail you put in. There's an aesthetic lesson. Yeah, you want to call it an aesthetic ethic. That's an interesting question, isn't it? All right, well, thank you. We'll pick that up again. This is the third time we've addressed it in part and pieces. And uh, Liz made a point, too. She was asking about that, and she used a funny word. Um, uh, she used the word, uh, so if it gets small enough, do, do you have to, don't, don't you use conceptual? And I, I want to ask Liz, I'm going to see her tomorrow. I hope I could remember to ask her if she means by conceptual, meaning starting to work out of your head just to do some of these little things. And uh, I'm going to suggest, of course, if that's what she means, that we, we definitely have to have another discussion for another day. All right, well, thank you. Um, thank you for being there. Actually, I had that comment from Gamel once when I was a student with him. That would very much surprise me. You know, I thought it was everything I could do just to stay in this presence. And one day he did actually say thank you for being there. And uh, I do th mean the same to you. Um, in the for the very same reason, though, it's we need this is all of a piece. You and I, the the person working to get there, the person who's been a little bit there, and us collaborating to make me understand better what I understand, and to make you uh, and to enable you to think of it, things a different way from what you've already thought. And I hope it does work out to be that way just for you. Um, in any case, comment, share, please, uh, subscribe. Nice to hear great comments, people saying they're subscribing that I haven't seen before. So, uh, all right, I'll talk to you um, on the next one. Great.